السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد One of the realities of this life is that each and every single person will go through two stages The first stage is a stage in this life and a night in this life and in this world where each and every single person will go to sleep as normal every single day on their own comfortable bed in their own comfortable mattress knowing that their friends that their family that their children their spouses their parents are within reaching distance they're close by they put their heads on a comfortable pillow and they go to sleep without a care in the world and even if there are some concerns some difficulties they are minute not enough to keep us awake not enough for us to spend the whole night awake and to lose our sleep this is the most regular night of each and every single one of us something we experience day in and day out and because of its comfort because of its luxury because of the way that it is and because of how shaitan deceives us even with the most simplest things we forget the second stage the second night that will also come upon each and every single one of us where instead of a comfortable bed our bed will be made out of dirt and mud and rocks and stones instead of having our family next to us our wife or our husband our children in the next room our parents down the road our companions will be insects and worms and bugs instead of having a comfortable mattress all we will lie on is rocks and stones instead of having a comfortable duvet to wrap ourselves in we will be wrapped in dirt and in mud and it is the second night that each and every single one of us needs to remember more often it's the second night that allah azza wa jal mentions over and over again in the quran and that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would constantly remind his companions of how easy it is when we're in this world to remember the first night but to forget the second and how quickly the second will come after the first one night you will spend in this world and the next night you will spend in your grave the prophet of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the hadith which is terrifying the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the hadith of abu huraira radiyallahu an ma ra'aytu manzaran qat illa wal qabr afda'u min i have not seen a single thing except that the grave is more terrifying than it and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam lived a life of hardship lived a life of difficulty he had in this life his wife die and his children die and close people and relatives die he lived at a time when people were trying to kill him people were persecuting and punishing him he went through difficulty and he saw difficulty and allah azza wa jal allowed him to see other things as well out of this world from the next life yet still the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said i have not seen a single thing except that the grave is more terrifying than it and when you understand this concept of how terrifying the grave is then you understand everything else which comes after it uthman radiyallahu an he would be with his companions and his friends and he would be reciting the quran and he would read verses of paradise and fire of jannah and naar and nothing would happen to him no visible change would come upon him and then he would pass by a verse of the quran that speaks about the grave and he would begin to cry and he would cry so profusely that his beard would become wet with his tears imagine how hard you have to cry in order for your beard to be dripping with tears and so they would say to him o oh khalifa of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you read the verses about paradise and the how fire and nothing happens to you and then you read verses of the grave and you cry in this way 
And he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Inna al-qabra awwalu manazil al-akhirah. فَمَنْ نَجَا مِنْهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَيْسَرُ مِنْ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَنْجُ مِنْهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَشَدُّ مِنْ Indeed, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that the grave is the first stage from the stages of the hereafter. So whosoever passes that stage, then everything after it will be easier. And whosoever fails that stage, then everything after it will become more difficult and more severe. And this is why the companions radiallahu anhum and the scholars of Islam would go to the graveyards and they would enact this advice that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave to us that we should go and frequently visit the graveyards and not only would they visit them but they would go and imagine themselves in that place they would humble themselves and pretend that they were the ones who were being entered into this grave it was reported from some of them that they would go to empty graves and they would go and stand inside that grave and then lie down. And then they would think about death and, and being in the grave and being in that situation. And then they would say to themselves, a day will come when you will be in this place. And after that day, no action will be accepted from you. You won't be able to perform any action. You won't be able to repent to Allah. But now, you still have a chance. Now, you still have time. And then they would get up and they would lead, leave that grave. As reported from Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he would go to the graveyards and he would say, tomorrow Malik will be here. This is my journey. This is my destination. And subhanallah, think about life in this way. Your destination is not that house that you want to buy in 20 years. It's not that job that you want to gain in 20 years. It's not that vision that you have for yourself and your children in this dunya. Your destination is the grave. Whether it comes tomorrow or the day after or next month or next year or in a hundred years. That is your final destination. And each and every single one is equal in this regard. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. The great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and one of the greatest men during that time. He would go to the graveyard and he would be accompanied with people that would surround him. And he would go to the graveyard and he would stay there. And then he would say to the people around him, if only we could talk to them and they could talk to us. If only we could have a conversation, then we would ask them, what did you find in your graves after death? What has Allah prepared for you? And they would ask us, what happened to our wealth, our wives, our children, our houses after our deaths? What happened to all of these possessions that we worked so hard for? We strive day and night to accumulate this wealth, to build this house, to have all of our affairs set in order. What happened to all of that? That money that I gathered, that wealth that I have, that house that I built, those cars that I have, now that I've died, what do they do for me? And then Ali radiallahu an, he would stay silent after asking these two questions. He would let people ponder and contemplate over this. And then he would say to them, By Allah, if we could speak to them and they could speak to us, then we would answer their question. And we would say that the charity of that person, the zakah that he or she used to give, will be protecting them from the right. And then they will come from the left, and they will find their fasting that they used to fast inside and outside of the month of Ramadan. That is their protecting them. And then he will try to come from the feet. And they will find that there are other good deeds there protecting this person. So the believer is surrounded 360 degrees, protected by the righteous actions that they performed in this world. So the angels will not be able to draw, clear, draw, draw close, nor will they be able to come near. And so instead they will stay at a distance and there they will ask their questions. Whereas the disbeliever will find no such safety. There will be no such safeguards around them. They will find no good deeds surrounding them. So the angels will come closer and they will stand next to them and they will instill terror and, and, and fear into them. And then they will ask their questions. Mar Rabbuk, wa ma deenuk, wa man nabiyuk. Who is your Lord? And what is your religion? And who is your Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
And for those people who have true Iman, then they will be able to answer these questions. My Lord is Allah. My religion is Islam. And my Prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But as for those who didn't have faith, those people who didn't have true Iman, then they won't be able to reply. And they will simply say, ah, ah. They will be unable to form any words, unable to speak with any words. And so there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree those people who will be given the rewards of the grave and those people who will be given the punishment of the grave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the believers that open for them gates from the gates of paradise and expand for them their grave and enlighten it for them and give them from the scent and the musk of paradise. And so that person will have their grave expanded to such an extent that they will not be able to see the ends of their grave. It will be so wide that they cannot see the end of their grave. And it will be so light that they will not feel any loneliness or any fear there. And Allah Azza wa Jal will allow the scent of paradise to come to them. As for the disbeliever, then their grave will be darkened and it will be restricted and they will be squeezed even more. And all that they will get is the foul odor and the heat of the fire of hell. And each and every single day, in the morning and the night, the inhabitants of the grave, they see their abode either in paradise or in the fire of hell. Those who are believers will see their abode in Jannah. And those who are disbelievers will see their abode in the fire of hell. And now يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُدُوًا وَعَشِيًّا As Allah says about Pharaoh, that each and every single day, he sees the fire in the morning and in the evening. وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةَ أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ And on the day when the hour is established, then they will be returned to a more severe torment, and that is the torment of the fire of hell. In some narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said, that it will be said to the believer, as for you, then sleep the sleep of a newlywed. Sleep the sleep of someone who has no concern. They have no problems. They have no need to fear, nor to despair. Sleep in peace and tranquility. And so that person will rest and spend that time in that grave. And they will know that inshallah, once the Yawm Al-Qiyamah comes, then they will have a greater reward. Whereas the disbeliever will be in a state of constant punishment, constantly being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the believer will say, Oh Allah, allow Yawm Al-Qiyamah to be established. Hasten it, bring it forward, because they know that what that which waits for them is greater. As for the disbeliever, they will say, Oh Allah, la tuqim is sa'a. Don't let, don't let the day of judgment come. Never establish the day of judgment. We don't want to see that day. Because they know that which comes after it will be much greater and more severe. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam also spoke about a number of punishments that will take place in the grave. And a number of things that people will do that will be a cause of punishment. In addition to their disbelief, in addition to not performing righteous deeds. There are certain things and this applies to Muslims as well as non-Muslims. Those people who perform these evil deeds will be given this punishment. The first is that which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Those people who do not clean themselves after urinating, who do not protect themselves from their own urine when they urinate, Akramakumullah. As is in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, عنhuma, that the Prophet ﷺ passed by two graves and he said, Innahuma la yu'adhiban wa ma yu'adhibani fi kabir. Indeed, these two people are being punished in their graves and they're not being punished because of something which is a major sin. As for one of them, then they will not protect themselves from the splashes of urine. And as for the other one, then they would spread rumors amongst the people. And so these two sins are from those sins which will cause a person to be punished in the grave. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the punishment of four types of people. Four types of people that he saw himself in a dream where Allah Azza wa Jal allowed him to see the punishment of these people. The first is a person who lies and their lies spread far and wide. A lie which they start that is then taken by someone else and spread and it continues to spread until it is rife amongst the whole community. 
such a person on Yawm al Qiyamah, such a person, sorry, in their grave, will continue to be punished until Yawm al Qiyamah. A person will come to that individual and they will come with a sharp hook and they will place this hook in the right side of their mouth within their cheek and then he will pull it with such force and such vigor and such violence that the skin will tear until the back of the neck and then he will take it out and he will come to the left side and he will place it within the left cheek and then again that angel will pull it with such force that it will tear until the back of his neck and then he will take it out and he will come back to the right side and he will find that it is healed so again he will place it in the right side and pull it to the back and then he will go to the left and find it healed and again he will do this and he will continue to move from right to left until Allah Azza wa Jal establishes Yawm Al Qiyamah this is what that person will continually have until Yawm Al Qiyamah a punishment which will not cease day and night they will face this the second person is the one who neglects the Quran, neglects reciting the Quran, neglects implementing the Quran, understanding the Quran, applying the teachings of the Quran. Such a person, the angels will come in their grave and that person will be made to lie down and the angel will come with a heavy rock and boulder and they will come and they will throw it upon the head of that person and they will throw it with such force that that person's head will smash. It will become flat, smashed to nothing, and then the rock will roll away. So the man will go, the angel will go to take that rock and boulder. And when he comes back, he finds that the head is reformed. It is healed. It is back in its original state. So again, he will raise it and again, he will throw it down. And then again, the rock will roll. And he will continue to do this over and over again until Yawm Al Qiyamah. The third person that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw is that person who performs zina. That person who performs fornication or adultery will riyadu billah. Such people in their grave will be placed in a furnace of fire and they will be thrown into the depths of that furnace. And that furnace will burn with such intensity that as it burns, that person will continue to rise. And they will rise within that furnace until they think that they can reach the edge and climb out. And then it will extinguish. And that person will fall again into the depths of that furnace. And then again, that fire will start and it will continue to rise and extinguish like this until Yawm Al Qiyamah. The fourth person that the Prophet the fourth person that the Prophet وسلم, mentioned is someone who deals in interest, in riba, who takes interest. And the Prophet وسلم, said that such a person will be in the middle of a river of blood. And it will be as if he is drowning. And he can see the river bank at a distance. And on that river bank he sees a man holding pebbles. And so the person, because he is drowning, he will want to go and come out of this river. So he will make his way towards the river bank. And as soon as he is in, within reaching distance of this river bank, able to climb out, that man on the bank with the pebbles will throw a pebble at him. And that person will go back to the middle of the river. And then again, they will try to come out. And again, another pebble will make them go back to the middle of the river. And they will continue to do this until Yawm Al Qiyamah. Also, that which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned is that a person who dies with a debt, even if that person be righteous, even if it is a person of Iman and righteous action, if they are indebted to other people, they took money that they haven't yet repaid, then until that money is repaid, their reward is withheld. Even the martyr who dies for the sake of Allah will not be allowed to enjoy the rewards of the grave until their debt is paid. The Prophet ﷺ, when a janazah would be brought out, he would ask the people, who is it or who is this person? And then he would say, does he have debt upon him or her? Do they have debt? And if they had debt, then he would not pray over them. He would not pray their janazah. And he would say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, indeed a person is withheld from the rewards of the grave until that debt is paid. And so unless one of the companions, Radiallahu Anhum, would 
uh, would put themselves forward, would volunteer to pay that debt off, the Prophet ﷺ would not pray the janazah of that person. Something else which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, which causes punishment for the person in the grave, is their relatives and their friends and those who live wailing over them. When a person dies in their janazah prayer, or when they're being buried, or when people come to see their body, wailing and crying and doing such things only makes that person punished in the grave. So that person, because of this wailing, is punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are also many other deeds which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned would be a cause of punishment in the grave such as missing prayers and drinking alcohol and murder and so on and so forth. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned a number of things that would save us from the punishment of the grave. And this is something which we all need to note and teach our, our family and our children. The first and most important thing is faith. To have Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is this belief that will give us sanctity in our graves. It will give us safety in our graves and it will give us safety on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. True, sincere belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly trusting in Allah azza wa jal and having certainty in our Iman. Secondly, to stay away from the sins that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned and to perform their opposites. To perform the, uh, the, the, the good deeds that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would encourage us to do. To fast more, to recite the Quran more, to give more in charity, so that in the grave these deeds will come and they will surround us and protect us from the terrors of the grave. And to stay away from the sins that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that there are also a number of things that will save a person from the punishment of the grave. One of them is to recite Surah Al Mulk every single night before going to sleep. And the Prophet ﷺ would not sleep during the night except after reciting the surah. The first surah of the 29th juz, Surah Al-Mulk. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Whosoever recites the surah at night before going to sleep, and then they die during their sleep, then Allah Azza wa Jal will save them from the punishment of the grave. Something else which saves a, per a person from the punishment of the grave is to die on Friday. Whoever dies on the Friday because of the blessing of this day, because of its high status in this religion, they will be saved from the punishment of the grave. Likewise, those people who die because of an ailment or a disease in their stomach, the Prophet ﷺ said that such people will also be saved from the punishment of the grave. But something which each and every single person can do is to recite the dua that the Prophet ﷺ would teach his companions. And the companions would say that the Prophet ﷺ would teach us this dua just as he would teach us Surah Al-Fatiha. Such is its importance. Just as you teach your children Surah Al-Fatiha, then you should teach them this dua. And that is a dua that we should recite in every single prayer in the tashahud. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min athabi jahannam wa min athabi al-qabr wa min fitnati al-mahya wa al-mamat wa min fitnati al-masih al-dajjal. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of hellfire and the punishment of the grave and from the trials of living and dying and from the trials of Dajjal. This is a dua that the Prophet ﷺ would teach his companions. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is a brief summary of what will happen in the grave. The reality that each and every single one of us has to face. So the question and the only question that remains is what have we prepared for such a time? What have we prepared for such a house, for such an abode, for such a place of residence? When a person in this life moves into a new house, a place where they know they're going to stay for months, if not years, if not decades, a house which they're going to pass on to their children and their, their grandchildren, they prepare that place. They fix the windows and the doors. They fix the furniture. They decorate the house. They beautify it in every way possible. They spend hundreds if not thousands of pounds upon this temporary abode. So what have we spent for our own abode? For our real abode? For the place where we will stay until Allah Azza wa decrees that every single person will be resurrected. 
What have you prepared in terms of decoration, in terms of living facilities for this abode? And the only living facilities and decorations that we can have for this abode is faith in Allah and righteous actions. The Prophet ﷺ once passed by Jabir radiallahu an, one of the companions, and he was fixing his house. The companions were poor, they lived in mud huts. So, each and, so every so often they would have to fix and repair their houses. And so the Prophet ﷺ saw him doing this. And he said, رَأَيْتُ أَنَّ الْأَمْرَ أَعْجَلَ مِنْ هَذَا I think that our affair is more hastier than this. Meaning I don't think we're going to be here long enough in this dunya to benefit from such repairs. To benefit from beautifying such places and such houses. And this is why the companions radiallahu anhum and the scholars of Islam generally lived in very humble abodes. They wouldn't waste their time and their money in this. Rather they would spend it for a time when they knew that it would benefit them radiallahu anhum ardahum. I want to leave you with two quotes. The first is of the great scholar Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, Whosoever remembers the grave often in this dunya, whosoever remembers the grave often in this dunya, then in, in, when they die, they will find for them a garden of paradise. And whosoever forgets their grave in this dunya, then when they die, they will only fire, find a pit of fire. So those people who remember the grave in this dunya, who remember death, who humble themselves and know their final abode, know which direction their life is going in, they will believe in Allah. They will increase in their deeds. And inshallah, then they will find this garden of paradise in their graves. Whereas those people who forget about death and the grave in this dunya, and they disobey Allah and follow their desires, then in their graves they will only find a pit of the fire of hell. Another scholar by the name of Salah ibn Abdul Quddus rahimahullahu ta'ala was once approached by a man and he asked him, what do we find after death? What is behind this door of death? What awaits for us? And he replied rahimahullahu ta'ala, there are only two things waiting. Either a garden of paradise or a pit of fire. And then he said to the man, but it is up to you to choose which one you want to enter to. It is up to you to choose which one you want to enter into. This is the gate of death. And depending on which key you use, you will either enter into the garden of paradise or the pit of the fire. As Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions in his beautiful poetry concerning Jannah and the description of paradise, he says that each and every single door needs a key. And likewise the gate to Jannah needs a key. And that key to the gate of Jannah is La ilaha illallah. But like every single key, it has teeth. Every single key has teeth. And the teeth to this key of La ilaha illallah is righteous actions. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who truly believe in La ilaha illallah who are gifted this key along with the teeth of righteous action. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the punishment of the fire and the grave. And may he subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on yawm al-qiyamah. Hadha wallahu alam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.